First common question that I always get is how hard was the install? And initially, it was a little bit confusing because I didn't know how everything was routed. This is my first air to water application. So once I understood the schematics and how everything is laid out, then it became a lot easier to understand. And of course, Kirk over at Force Induction Interchiller helped out a ton with all my questions on how to properly set this thing up. But there were two things I couldn't do here in my garage, and that was evacuate the AC Freon legally because I didn't have a tank to evacuate. And the second thing was to weld the AC lines. So the first thing that I did was take the car over to an AC shop and let them retrieve the AC Freon from the car. That was completely free. Then I brought it back home and took apart the two AC lines that needed to come off. That way I can take it to a machine shop and have them weld it. Everything else was done in my garage, which was pretty easy. If you have a basic knowledge on how to turn a wrench, then you can install this in your garage, especially with the instructions that come with the kit. The first instructions were more of a universal instruction, which does make sense to work for many cars. But now with every kit that you buy under the Infinity Q15 Q60 link, they come with more detailed instructions. Nice. Common question number two is how stealthy is the kit? Now, instead of telling you, let me go ahead and show you. Through the front, you can't see nothing. Even if you try to put some light in there, all you see are some hoses. Under the hood, it's not that much different. You can clearly see these two wraps that I put on there. That way I can try to hold as much cold temperatures within there and to deflect any radiating heat. This is one of the main hoses coming out from the system. This was normally a rubber hose, but since I installed everything using nylon braided hose, I got too many hoes. What? Nigga, no Bro, what are you don't. talking about, man? That's what is behind the bumper. So this is the main line coming out of the AC compressor, and I wrapped that in neoprene. Then the drag valve I installed over here. I could have done a lot better and made the hoses a lot shorter. You wouldn't even be able to tell that that's there, but I messed up later down the road, that will be modified. Other than that, underneath the hood, you can't really tell that I have a chiller. The only dead giveaway would be the ice forming on any of the metal. Common question number four is how exactly did I mount the chiller onto the car? Initially, I had mounted it onto the crash bar, which was the easiest and safest bet. The way I mounted it was drilling holes on the back of the crash bar installing it with rib nuts. As you can tell, I had the chiller mounted offset over to the driver's side. And that's basically because if you know the Q50 and Q60, it has more weight over on the passenger side because of the battery. And also the fender tank is here. So I kind of wanted to offset the weight over to the driver's side so it can kind of balance out the weight distribution. Now let me go ahead and pull off the bumper for you so you can see how it's currently mounted on the car. All right, so here it is. This is the chiller mounted onto this aluminum stock that I purchased from Home Depot. It's literally just an aluminum flat bar, the same one that I used for the do-it-yourself can. The only thing is that this one is wider, but as you can see, it's mounted really good. It's not going anywhere. These hoses are a little heavy, so I just use zip tie here so it can hold it back a little bit. It came with two L brackets, and that's what I use to mount onto this bar. And as you can tell, I have nylon braided hoses instead of the rubber hoses. Nylon braided resist any condensation, which is really good. You do not want to condensate on the track. If you do have rubber hoses, you're gonna want to insulate them in neoprene or some type of foam insulation like a sea foam. So now that this is here, another common question is, do you run it with your heat exchanger? And the short answer is no. The heat exchanger is going to serve as a heating element if you leave that on. So if you do wanna run a heat exchanger with the chiller, you're going to want to have a bypass valve. That way you can bypass the chiller and only run the heat exchanger. So another common question that I get is how cold do the tents really get? 
Well, that varies on how much flow you have from the coolant. Like how much fluid can your pumps actually move? This is a Red Sport, so I have two OEM pumps and I believe it flows well enough. You can opt in to get a pre-programmed EMP, which that's gonna outflow these two pumps maybe three times over. The general idea is the faster it flows, the colder your temps. Another variable would be how much coolant you have. Less reserve means it gets colder much faster, but also heats up faster. More reserve gets colder, slower, but cold temps will last much longer. That's why I have a fender tank. Also, you can opt in to get a stage two versus a stage one. With the stage two, you can almost bet your temps will be below 32 degrees all the time. Ambient temps also play a factor. If it's colder out, you can expect your charge temps to be much colder. So let's just say it's 85 degrees outside. My charge air temps will be about 55 degrees. That would be my charge air coolant will be about 55 degrees. And that's with the drag valve off. So I'm getting AC in the cabin and Freon flowing through the chiller. But if I activate the drag valve, that literally cuts off all Freon from going into the evaporator. So that means the cabin won't be cold anymore all that Freon will be concentrated on the chiller and that will bring down my temps to about 30 degrees. Now, if it's colder out, let's say it's 60 something degrees outside, I can get this thing into the teens, the charge air coolant. I've already got it down to single digit numbers. That's why if you are going to do this and you want the coldest temperatures possible, a stage two kit will give you those freezing temps all the time. But being in Florida with average temps around 80, your charge air coolant will be about 50, 55 degrees. Another common question is how much was the entire install? After everything was said and done, I paid over $1,800 to complete the whole install myself. It can be had for a lot cheaper depending on the fittings and hoses that you use. Obviously, these nylon braided hoses are very expensive. So the cheaper way would be just to use rubber hoses and use push lock fittings. Lucky for you, if you use code ZillaFooBoost 10 at checkout, you can save 10% off your order. One of the most common questions that I always get is, do you need a retune? And in short, no, you can treat this mod like any other cooling mod. However, thanks to the much colder temps, you do have the option to get a retune and run more advanced timing. With that, you can extract more power out of your engine. So you have the option to get a retune, make more power, or install the chiller and use it as a preventative measure to detonation due to high charge air temps. So gone are the days of heat soaking. If you wanna see how much power you can make with the chiller, make sure to watch this video here and keep it locked into my channel.